Now, what you just summarized is one type of integral view, which includes all of the quadrants, the I, we, and it dimensions, as they evolve through all the levels, from matter to body to mind to soul to spirit. Would you say that that type of integral view tends to be denied in the West, and often in the East as well, because either some of the levels or some of the quadrants are left out? Oh, yes. Especially in the modern West, we can't help but notice that all of the higher transpersonal spiritual levels of consciousness are looked upon with grave suspicion and even outright hostility. In fact, the worldview of scientific materialism, which is the official worldview of the modern West, aggressively denies not only the higher stages of consciousness development, but the existence of consciousness itself. And you call this flatland. That's right, flatland. Either in the form of subtle reductionism, which reduces every interior or left-hand event to its exterior or right-hand correlate, or worse, gross reductionism, which reduces every right-hand system to right-hand atoms. In either case, the entire left-hand domains are denied irreducible reality. There is no consciousness, no mind, no soul, no spirit, no value, no depth, and no divinity found anywhere in the disqualified universe, only a great web of interwoven its, or even worse, atomistic its, a truly insane worldview, wouldn't you say? Sounds true enough. Could you trace this historical rise of flatland? The great holarchy, the developmental path of mind to body to soul to spirit, has been part of the cultural background of most humans for most of our history. That is, right up until the Enlightenment in the West. With a fundamental Enlightenment paradigm, all of reality, including the great holarchy, was mapped in empirical and monological terms. This was a well-intentioned but deeply confused attempt to understand consciousness and morals and values and meaning by putting them under the microscope of the monological gaze. And you know what happened? The interior depths completely disappeared from view. They could not be found with a monological gaze, and so they were soon pronounced non-existent or illusory or derivative or epiphenomenal, all polite words for not really real. All eyes and all we's were reduced to mere its, atomistic or holistic, depending upon your prejudice, but all of which had only, at best, functional fit. None of these interwoven its can be said to be better or deeper or higher or more valuable, just equally flat and endlessly faded surfaces scurrying about in objective systems, not one of which has the slightest clue as to value or depth or quality or goodness or beauty or worth. In other words... Flatland. We have flatland. We looked at this as good news, bad news. The good news of modernity was that the big three were differentiated, art, science, morals. The bad news was that they had not yet been integrated, and this allowed an explosive science to colonize and dominate the I and the we domains. Thus, the downside of the Enlightenment was that it reduced all left-hand dimensions to their right-hand correlates, and it thought that a simple mapping of these empirical exteriors was all the knowledge that was worth knowing, the mirror of nature, the representation paradigm. This left out the mapmaker itself, the consciousness, the interiors, the left-hand dimensions, and resulted in nothing but the flat and faded surfaces of a brutally monochrome world. And so, following John Locke, the teacher of the Enlightenment, the great modern mapping game was afoot map the entire cosmos in empirical terms. And a century or so into this game of converting the entire cosmos into objective its, the Enlightenment agenda awoke one morning to find to its utter horror that it was living in a thoroughly disqualified universe, a universe absolutely bereft of value, meaning, consciousness, quality, and worth. In mapping exterior correlates, it had gutted all interior depth, had eviscerated the interiors, and laid them out to dry in the blazing sun of the monological gaze. And so, slowly, in an atmosphere of puzzled confusion, the bloodless corpse of the Enlightenment agenda was wheeled into the morgue, and the postmodern rebellion began. Postmodern, post-Enlightenment, post-empirical, post-whatever. Something had gone profoundly, profoundly wrong. The collapse of the cosmos. Yes. 
the monological agenda had, in one sweeping action, completely collapsed the interior dimensions of being and consciousness and depth. It had, in other words, completely collapsed the great holarchy of consciousness. Whether pre-personal, personal, or transpersonal, you cannot find consciousness with a monological gaze. You cannot see it with a microscope, a telescope, a photographic plate. And so it must not exist. It must not be really real. And that's basically why it is only with the modern West that we do not have access to the great holarchy.